this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is a video to compare the Steel Series Aerox 3 Wireless with its new brother, the Steel Series Aerox 5 Wireless. Now, I have unboxed and reviewed both these mice separately, including the Fancy Ghost Edition, which we'll see in a second. And I want to talk to you about what the differences are between these mice and compare them side by side to show you a view of the differences and the physical shapes and sizes of the mice. Now I'll leave all the specs in the description including the information on the size differences in terms of the actual measurements. And I want to give you a real world chat about what they're like to use. You can see the Ghost Edition here which is white. Steel Series mice are actually available in various colors now. And obviously the Aerox 3 wireless is actually very affordable now. It's ridiculously cheap. You can get it for about 59 pounds sterling and roughly the same in dollars, I believe, which makes it very affordable directly from their site. And it used to be about 100, so it's actually really affordable and a great mouse to use with great battery life, Bluetooth, and wireless connectivity. And the Aerox 5 basically takes that original awesomeness and packs in more buttons, a slightly different shape and some improvements. So you can see some shots of it here. You'll notice that it sits a little bit higher on the desk and you'll see them compared a bit later on to see the difference between those and what that's like. But you'll notice that there are multiple buttons on the side. So this mouse has nine buttons and they stick out a bit more on the side and they're also a bit more accessible with some minor drawbacks that I'll talk to you about later on. It also has the same sort of IP54 dust and water ingress protection that the Aerox 3 does, so they're both similar in that way. They also both have maximum 18,000 CPI, 400 IPS, 40 Gs acceleration, 1000 Hz polling rate. So they all hit the same sort of specs in terms of what they can do and what's under the hood. And they also use golden micro switches, which are also IP54 rated. So they're designed basically to last and to resist problems that you might have from dust and dirt ingress and other things through that shell, which is obviously holy. They are slightly different in terms of the weight but in the package, you will find that they have a very similar setup. So they both come with a USB-C dongle and an adapter slash extender dock that you can use on your desk to extend the range of the wireless dongle, but also to keep the charging cable near you. They both use USB-C charging capabilities and fast charging as well. They both also pack in some serious battery life with the claim being 200 hours on the Aerox 3 and about 180 on the Aerox 5. Although, as I said in the review, I found that was a bit less and that is over Bluetooth as well. So it's worth bearing that in mind. If you're using 2.4 gigahertz, you will get less out of both of these, but you do have convenient fast charging. So plug it in 15 minutes of charge. You can get up to 40 hours extra battery life. So that's pretty nuts. Now you will see the difference between the size and shape of them, but you'll notice they both have slick PTFE feet on the underside. You have the button to switch between the different modes. And you can also plug the mouse into your PC using the USB-C cable and charge it and game at the same time. So you don't need to worry about that. So you have various options, obviously Bluetooth, wireless and wired connections, and also to play while charging if needed. So it's really straightforward. Now you will see some differences, quite a few differences on top. Now you notice, for example, the larger CPI button behind the mouse wheel. You also notice there's a lot more buttons on the side of the Aerox 5. And you can see from these shots with a side by side, that there's quite a bit of a difference in the shape and size. The Aerox 5 is noticeably taller. Now it's not massive, but I found it's a much nicer fit in the hand. It pushes up into my hand in a much nicer way. I found it a lot more comfortable to use. It's only small and on the camera, for example, you'll see it's only slight. There's not a lot here, but there is also a slight dip on the left hand side where your thumb sits in. So it's a bit more ergonomic. And I found that the fit is a lot nicer. It's a lot more comfortable to use with some minor drawbacks that I'll talk about later on, but otherwise a very nice design. I also will note that on the Aerox 3, the side buttons were a little bit more difficult to press than they are on the RX-5. The RX-5 has much more accessible side buttons. They jut out a lot further. They're easier to press. They're easier to see. And you obviously have more of them, which means that you can customize them more as well. They're both lightweight, though, and they both have those slick PTFE feet on the underside, so they do move around on the desk really nicely. I've found that the Aerox 5 is more enjoyable 
generally for gaming purposes, but they're both wonderful. And if you want a lighter mouse, then the Aerox 3 is a better option. Also, just the sheer number of features and specs on this mouse for the price is a wonderful setup. They use next-gen Golden Micro IP54 switches, which are rated up to 80 million clicks. There's minimal pre-travel in my experience on both mice. They give you a good response when you use them. They don't, however, use the same optical magnetic switches that are on the Steel Series Prime, so they're not quite as fancy as that, but it's worth bearing in mind. Now, in terms of the weight comparison, you can see that the Aerox 5 comes in at about 74 grams, whereas the Aerox 3 is a touch lighter at 68. So this is the Ghost Edition, but it's the same for the standard one you can see lighter. So if being lightweight is more important to you, then obviously the Aerox 3 is the one to go for. They're both wireless though, so it's surprising that either of them weigh in around this weight because that is considerably light. So those are very lightweight mice that are easy to negotiate around and a lot of fun to flick about and play with. They both have some pretty subtle RGB lighting. You can see one's flashing, that's because it's not paired with a PC. It's not plugged in, connected with the dongle but you do have some very subtle RGB lighting which can be adjusted within the software but also does things like turns off when the mouse is in use so when you're actually moving it around the light will turn off that saves battery life on both of them and that's part of how they managed to maintain such a good battery life. Now I will note that during my testing I found the Aerox 3 seemed like it lasted longer before it needed plugging in. I felt like I had to plug that in less and I've had to with the Aerox 5. I find that I plug in the Aerox 5 more often and that's one downside. It has 180 hours claimed battery life but I think it's a lot less than that when you're using it on 2.4 gigahertz. However there are things like high efficiency mode that you can turn on within the software which I covered in the review so be sure to check out the review link to in the description. And for the most part I definitely prefer the Aerox 5 mostly because of the fit but also because of the side buttons there are a number of different side buttons on the side here you have that silver front one which is really interesting you also have three thumb buttons above that and there's actually four there technically because that long one just above the two below it is actually two buttons in one but the weird thing about that button is it is a button that you push down or up so it's a flick up and down button rather than one that you'd push in which is certainly something that's a bit strange and a bit difficult to get used to but gives you some flexibility in what you can do with it and you can see there's multiple buttons here one of the gripes i have with this setup however is you'll notice that the overall finish of this mouse is very matte so it's a very matte finish which makes it easy to grip onto but those buttons are very slick by comparison so they're very sort of sleek but also have a very sort of slick shiny finish on them which i think means that they're a bit not as nice to press and a bit slippery so if you have particularly oily or greasy or sweaty hands you might find these problematic and I also feel like that up and down switch is just a bit awkward to use. You can see some of me using it here. You basically press it in the same way you would the left and right mouse buttons. So basically it actuates from being pressed from the top or pushed up towards the sky from below, which is a bit awkward. But I think if you can get used to it, that'd be fine. However, both mice have a wonderful mouse wheel with some nice tactile, gentle feedback and not too much noise. However, I will say that the Aerox 5 is definitely my preference. It's the better looking of the two, it's a better fit, the button layout's more intelligently thought out, and there's a lot more going on here that I enjoy. I've also found that it has been so enjoyable that I probably will be using it as my main mouse for quite some time. It is certainly a very nice one and one of the better mice that I've tried recently. I have obviously tried a lot of other ones and I didn't really like the Prime lineup from Steel Series that much. I think the Aerox ones are nicer, that's my personal preference, although I do wish that they had the optical switches on the Aerox. And I will be doing a video on the Aerox 9 shortly, so subscribe if you're not already to check that out. And if you're interested, hit that subscribe button on the Pews channel, which is my gameplay channel as well, to see me playing games like Ready or Not that you can see going on in the background here. This is a great mouse, and this has been the Provoke Prawn. Thanks for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, hilarious, or otherwise. Take a look at these other videos that I think you might find interesting as well. And have a look at the description for links and other information you might find useful. Click that join button to see the benefits of being a member of my YouTube channel. And most importantly, 
have a great life.